Welcome in to another week of XFL Weekly, where we sit down, chat, and break down some uh, some XFL Weekly. Uh, I am Kyle Krajewski, joined by my good friend, Zach Cole. Zach, Yo. how are you today? What's up, man? I'm, I'm doing good. I can't complain. It's uh, uh, another chilly day in January. We, we are kind of finally moving through the NFL season. We're down to one game left, and... Uh, I, it's it's getting real, you know. The XFL is right around the corner. I don't want to overlook that Super Bowl game, but uh, I'm pretty excited about what's to come afterwards. So uh, I'm looking forward. Yeah, I mean, we get the Super Bowl, and then six days later, we kick off the XFL season. Um, yeah, uh, it's exciting. Uh, everything is all here taking place, uh, and football is alive and well, and will continue to be throughout the spring, which Good is stuff. which is exciting. Uh, yeah. So today we're going to chat about uh, basically all the XFL teams, which ones you can root for. Uh, I guess the spoiler is you can root for all of them or any of them. Um, but we're going to kind of break down team by team, uh, maybe a few reasons why you should root for which team. Um, and then before we get into that, uh, I just want to say that we are both on YouTube and in podcast format. So whichever one you are watching or listening to currently uh be sure to tune into the other if you have the opportunity to uh be sure to like subscribe all that fun stuff um you can find us on instagram and twitter at xfl underscore weekly um and then we're on our podcasting platforms as just xfl weekly uh hopefully you can find us there and on youtube we are xfl weekly um and this is episode three and zach let's get into it um, I guess we'll go alphabetical order, uh, okay. just because that's how fun things go, uh, alphabetically, <laughs> uh, and we'll kick, kick us off with the Arlington Renegades, uh, moving from Dallas down to Arlington, um, which isn't much of a trip, uh, just mostly just a little bit of a name change. But I think the one key thing here is Bob Stoops making his return as their head coach, um, which I think is a, is a key point for this team um returning from their 2020 season but he's a oklahoma coach coaching legend mm -hmm. um making his return to to football yeah it's um i i think that seeing bob stoops come back is really kind of cool especially because he was so legendary in college football for such a long time i mean he he ran that oklahoma program when you think of the the glory years of um I, I don't know, Adrian Peterson when he was at Oklahoma and, and just some of those really high-end recruits that, that he had come through there. So he, he definitely knows what he's doing um, in, in terms of, of coaching. And, and uh, I, I think that he can bring a lot of life to this Arlington team. And I was actually – I, I kind of got caught off guard that you threw it over to me there because I was looking up um, <laughs> where they were playing. Uh, and they're actually playing at uh, Globe Life Stadium, which is, uh, I believe, the old Texas Rangers field, uh, the yes. baseball team, which is which is pretty cool. So um, they were home to the Rangers for 26 seasons. So it's cool to see that stadium being repurposed to something else. Um, so yeah, it's it's now uh, it was formerly Globe Life Park. Now it's Choctaw Stadium. So <laughs> I, yes. I guess that just Classic. that adds that adds some more to uh to the reason to cheer for the uh the, the renegades here. But yeah, there's a there's a few of these here. Uh a few of these XFL teams are playing in kind of like the converted uh stadiums. Um, yeah. Some of them have their own stadium, some are playing in soccer stadiums, uh, a little all over the place just because I and I'm not surprised that they don't have their own capital to kind of build their own stadiums, but understandably mm -hmm. but uh yeah so renegades playing in a a transitioned football field which interesting yeah um and just kind of taking a look at at their roster um obviously we won't go name by name here but uh, a couple names that i see i see jeremy cox and kenneth farrow who were both uh brief nfl players for a little while um the name jordan smallwood rings a bell to me there too um, I think he was uh, pretty solid in his time when he was at Oklahoma. Um, and quite honestly, I haven't taken a look at the defense yet. So I'll get back to you on that one in a second. Here, <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, you know what? Speaking of defense, actually, what I did see is that the defense may actually be one of the, uh, I guess, the most stacked in the team uh, or in mm. the division or in the league. 
uh, and just that I think they have a lot of depth. Um, okay. I've been seeing a lot of reports just coming from uh, the opening open practices that uh, there's a lot of guys on this team that will be say, seeing playing time, and it's not because uh, they're all kind of bad and they're going to rotate in and out. I think it's just because they are all very good. There's a lot of playmakers um, kind of spread this, spread throughout this uh, the defensive roster. Um, so there's going to be a lot of like a lot of rotations going on, but that's just because I, based on the play calling, um, they're going to be rotating in out in and out some uh, some of those different defensive players. Interesting. Well, I'm going to throw a couple names at you. I didn't really see anything until I got down into the um, into the general range of the defensive backs, and I see Will Hill is on here um, out of Florida. He was an NFL corner for quite a while. Um, he's one of those guys that just wants to play till he's dead. I think he's like a million years old. Um, Cravon LeBlanc, um, being from Pennsylvania. Got to watch a lot of Eagles games. He played for the Eagles for a little while. Um, and then, you know, maybe most substantially on this team, Kyle, this is uh, the new home of Mr. Marquette King, the uh, yes, the, the punting phenom himself. So uh, maybe that's a reason to, to cheer for the, the Renegades here. My <laughs> One of the best punters to ever play, uh, making <laughs> his way to the XFL. Um, my favorite thing about Marquette King was he was always a fantastic uh, thrower in Madden. Um, so <laughs> he, he was like the perfect punter to have on your squad. Uh, if you were a, a go or a fake punter, um, he was incredible and he always, he was the best transition from a uh, punter to kicker. Uh, if you wanted to make those field goals with the yeah, that great kick power. leg power. Yep. yep. That's exactly it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Marquette King, my own personal Madden legend, uh, making his way back to the XFL. Uh, where he Beautiful. was in 2020, I believe. Beautiful. Well, Kyle, let me uh, let's jump to our next team here. Let me let me quiz you on the DC Defenders. I know uh, I'm listening. You were you were a fan initially about the DC Defenders, so tell me what you're interested in. Oh well, right off the bat, uh, QB uh, Jordan Tamu, um, absolutely pumped that he's on the squad because not only was he probably the best quarterback for the XFL in 2020. Uh, back when he played for uh, St. Louis. But last year for the USFL, he was the best quarterback. So he, he continues to be the best spring football quarterback um, and is now <laughs> on the defenders, uh, where I don't see why that trend would stop. Um, I think he was like the biggest signing for the XFL just because he changed from St. Louis, uh, where he didn't return. He's now in D.C., um, and he was basically, I mean, looking at his stats, he was kind of like the unanimous MVP for the XFL uh, that wasn't named the MVP for the XFL because there wasn't an opportunity to. Uh, mm -hmm. But he, uh, he was like by far the best player uh, making his way to, to D.C. now. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I um, uh, prior to uh, recording the shows and everything, I, I took a look at this team, and they have three actually really high quality quarterbacks on the team. Yeah, um, they have Eric Dungy, who uh, was a, a a pretty substantial quarterback at Syracuse in, in his time there, um, and they have De'Eric King, who was actually a really highly recruited quarterback, um, and he bounced around from Houston to uh, he ended up at Miami, is where he graduated from, um, and, and of course they have Tamu Ta Tamu, however we want to say it. Um, who, like you mentioned, was the former XFL almost MVP. So they, they have a lot of talent at the quarterback position here, especially. Oh, yeah. I think they have the like by far the best depth at quarterback, um, mm -hmm. which is an interesting position to have depth at. Yeah, um, right. But, I mean, if anything, they've just got trade bait for any other team uh, in the XFL. That is true. Um, I also see on here they have Ryquell Armstead at running back, yep. uh, former Jacksonville Jaguar. So, um, you know, when, when you kind of think about the XFL in its entirety, that's a pretty big name um, for a guy that was hanging around with an NFL team for quite a while. Um, outside of that, I don't really see any other um, names that really pop out at me, uh, aside from what might be the best name in the whole entire league, uh, Tariquius Tisdale. Um, I really like that name a lot. So uh, I think that's where we're going to uh, – that's where I'm going to put a fork in the roster breakdown there. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad stop. Uh, <laughs> another thing I'd like to highlight uh, is the infamous D.C. Defender Beer Snake. 
<laughs> and if you've watched the XFL in 2020, it is that incredible, uh, incredible collection of fans just stacking up all their cups uh, from the beers that they've had throughout the game. And it just goes up <laughs> sections and sections. Uh, and it's a beautiful sight to see. But moving on to our next team. Uh, we've got the Houston Roughnecks, mm. uh, a returning squad with a new logo. There's a few returning squads. Uh, DC was a returning one. Uh, all three of these have been. Um, Roughnecks are back, new logo, uh, back in Houston. And I think, quite honestly, the Roughnecks have the absolute best helmet in, in the entire mm. XFL. Yes, they uh, do. I love the division of the blue and red and white and the fact that they're all used in the uh, in the helmet. And I, I don't know if you've seen their jerseys or their uh, their uniforms, um, but they have like the speckled blue or black uh, on the numbers uh, to kind of give it like a like an oil splatter kind of look. Uh, and it's really dope. Um, so that's a highlight for me. And something else to note is that the Roughnecks were the only undefeated team uh, mm-hmm. in the XFL back in 2020. Uh, they went, I think it was five and oh. And every other team was sitting at three and two or two and three or some combination of that. But Roughnecks pulled it out. Went yeah, they were, they were uh, I would say the Roughnecks were probably, I, I, not to jump on the undefeated team, of course, but I would say they were probably my favorite team uh, in, in the early iteration of the XFL. Um, and I, I'm actually, I'm going to miss their old jerseys a little bit. They wore those bright red uniforms with the silver helmets. Um, I thought that they were just really a really clean look, um, but not to belabor the point too awful much. I think I'm also going to miss PJ Walker, who is now yeah. uh, one of the yeah. quarterbacks for my beloved Carolina Panthers. Uh, but he was just he was electric uh, when when he was playing for the uh, for the Roughnecks the first time around, and actually ended up winning him a, a job with the uh, you know in the NFL with the Carolina Panthers actually. So um, it was kind of cool to see. And I think the last point. Uh, that I'll just talk about real quick with the uh, the Roughnecks is their head coach is Wade Phillips, um, yeah. who is you know uh, an, an NFL legend, um, head coach, defensive so, legend, yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, he's you know that's that's a big that's a big kind of sticking point for them to to probably be. I would say I don't know the betting odds or anything, but I would say early favorites. So, um, you know, just having a, a coach that knows how to coach is a, a huge step. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Someone with a uh prior experience at at the professional level. Uh, I think his uh, head coaching, uh, his experience as a head coach wasn't perfect, uh, but as a defensive coordinator, it was, I think he might have been one of the best defensive coordinators ever, uh, at least up there. Um, So yeah, head coach, that's incredible. Uh, And hopefully they go undefeated again. I think that'd be pretty dope. Uh, especially with those uniforms. Definitely, definitely. All right, um, next we have the Orlando Guardians, um, who, correct me if I'm wrong, are, are they a new team this year? I'm sorry, I should know so that they So mo- they moved from New York. They were the New okay. York Guardians. Uh, okay. Moving down, to, moving down to Orlando, but sticking with the, the Gorilla logo, um, which is interesting because I don't think King Kong ever went to – ever went to orlando um and i think they're <laughs> it's interesting because i think they're called the guardians as like a reference to like the the gargoyles or the guardians of the like the like the right the the, uh, like the, the high-rise the buildings. buildings yes the yeah. high-rise buildings. so that's like where they got their name and now they're in orlando and i i don't see the connection but either way still dope well, let me ask you, Kyle. Did you uh, miss that whole movie when King Kong actually went to Disney World? Um... What? <laughs> I yeah, I completely that completely flew over my head. I I, I how now that I re- remember, I do remember him climbing up uh, Cinderella's castle. <laughs> yeah, he yes, was there. That's actually, yep. He wow. uh, he was the ones that shot off the uh, the fireworks at one time. Uh, that was oh it. yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. I those were warning fireworks. They weren't. <laughs> That's yeah. Exactly. They weren't celebratory fireworks. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. It's all coming together. <laughs> uh, no, not to get too far from uh, the whole point that we're talking about here. Um, the uh, the Orlando Guardians have some interesting names on the roster. Um, 
Uh, first, let me just real quick talk about quarterback. They have DeAndre Francois, who was a troubled quarterback from Florida State, um, but absolutely talented, super, super talented. Uh, there were some uh, domestic assault issues and things like that, and videos came out. So he ended up uh, finishing up at Hampton um, University College. I'm not sure which. Um, but he definitely super talented. And uh, Paxton Lynch also is an Orlando Guardian, oh, yeah. um, former NFL Recently. quarterback. So. Two really, really decent quarterbacks in their in their uh, QB room there, and I also t- kind of took note of a couple different wide receivers. Um, Cody Latimer, who was an NFL wide receiver for a little while, and uh, who's my other one? Eli Rogers, uh, who was with the um, Pittsburgh Steelers for a little while. Uh, both, you know, former NFL players. Um, and then just to kind of add to the uh, the great name uh, list, I think they have a couple good. Uh, uh, a couple good entries here. They have uh, D'Afferny McGriff, uh, who's a tight end out of uh, Florida State. And they also have <sighs> Zavion Furcron. Zavion Furcron, I think I'm saying that right. He's an offensive lineman out of Southern Illinois. So um, two really great football names there. Yes. <laughs> All timers, <laughs> some would say. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Kyle, you know, I don't. Do we have the capability to uh, to to share to share a screen real quick here? Oh, go for it if you can. Am I throwing something? All right, let me let me go to that. It's the roster here. I just need to show you some of the pictures, or actually, just really one picture. Um, It's defensive lineman Nick Coe. Uh, Clearly, he was not there for the day that they were taking roster pictures. (laughs) He. Everyone else seems a little bit on the professional side. He's uh, number 34. He's in the defensive line category. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. There he is. Yeah, I think that that's a really – it's just a great picture in my opinion. So uh, I just wanted to shout him out real quick. <laughs> yeah, let me let me get a good zoom in on that. Uh, it looks like he, he just woke up. Oh, I got to find it. I lost it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it looks like he just kind of woke up. Um, man, it's not showing though. I'll uh, tell you what, it looks like uh, it looks like Dante when we accidentally wake him up from a nap, and he, uh, <laughs> he he hops on a recording for first seed there. Shout out Dante! Shout out Dante! <laughs> uh, there we go. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Got the, the snap back backwards. <laughs> Very professional. Thank you, Mister Co. We'll be rooting for you. Always. Um, <laughs> all right, let's jump into the the San Antonio Brahmas. Um, I'll be honest, Zach. There were a few things that I was not able to find for this team, and that was a lot to root for. Um, so okay. if you're in the San Antonio Brahmas, uh, you've got you've got a good team. Um, I just personally couldn't find a lot uh, to add to these bullet points, other than they are called the Brahmas. Um, <laughs> and we learned a f- few weeks ago that the Brahma is an animal that is a uh, a very large looking cow mm-hmm. um and i also learned that the rock has a a brahma tattoo uh so that's kind of like the inspiration to okay to the name of the brahmas um but yeah the brahmas uh they are a brahma uh, i would think that they're, they're very much in the texas region um and their head coach uh rookie head coach but a familiar name heinz ward um mm. i that's incredible. Um, I think he's a great get, uh, a great guy to share some experience to this locker room. Um, and I, I quite honestly, I think he's a very good, very good leader uh, and could uh, do something with the squad. Yeah. I, I really don't have a lot more to add other than I think that the Brahma's name kind of ties in with like the Texas Longhorns um, kind of ties in with like maybe the, the Houston Texans logo. It's all kind of just kind of connected in that, uh, that Texas realm sort of deal. Um, but yeah, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head with this, Kyle. There's not really a lot of crazy stuff to talk about here. I, it feels like it, it has to be the, the Pittsburgh fans' favorite XFL team uh, with the black and yellow and with Heinz Ward being the coach. So uh, I think that's about all I'll, I'll contribute to this conversation here. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Uh, so let's jump into the next team, the Seattle Sea Dragons, uh, which I... I'll go on record saying they have the coolest logo and color scheme mm-hmm. uh, with the green, the green and the orange. Uh, I think that is incredibly dope. Uh, and probably my, my second 
uh, pick for best helmet in the XFL. Um, they've got a really cool, I had it somewhere. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to share the screen, but they have a really cool, like middle, um, like a middle line on their helmets. Like a helmet um, stripe, basically. Of, yeah. Um, there it is. Yeah. It's like, uh, they have orange helmets and they have like a patterned, almost like a snake skin, uh, large middle line. That's um, awesome. And it looks really dope. Um, I'll probably add it to like the screen to the side. So if you're watching this, you'll see it. Um, but it's it's a really dope helmet. Uh, and they have the same kind of design for their like, they're like shoulder sleeves. Um, that's a good one. Uh, but yeah, cool logo, cool color scheme. And quite honestly, the best quarterback to receiver, uh, quarterback to receiver combo in NFL great backup uh, Ben DiNucci. Um, mm -hmm. known for his time backing up Dak Prescott in Dallas. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, fantasy legend Josh Gordon uh, doesn't quit on playing football, and I'm very happy he has a home <laughs> in Seattle. Um, I love watching this man play, whether it's for any NFL team, uh, and now especially on the XFL, I'm amped to see him, see him play again. Yeah, I, I think that the the Sea Dragons here are a really cool team, and I think they'll catch a lot of people's attention early on. Um, you mentioned uh, with with Ben DiNucci being there, TikTok legend Ben DiNucci, uh, with his with his infamous song and everything. Great uniforms to bat. I love the design of the uniforms. I love the logo, the dragon, and the shape of an S. Everything about them is just it, it's fantastic, and I hope that their play on the field can can kind of back up uh how you know how, how nice everything else looks um last one i'll throw in is that they do play in lumen field uh the seattle seahawks home stadium so um you know if they can get that filled up they can get that place rocking and it could be a real home field advantage so look out for them. seattle loves their football yes, uh, they do. speaking of a town loving their football mm. st louis battle Perfect hawks transition. Perfect. St. Louis Battlehawks, there's football back in St. Louis. And man, oh man, that that's that city just craves any and all football. Uh, I think the Battlehawks in 2020 had the like the highest attendance record uh because I and I've seen pictures of like the tailgates and such. St. Louis loves their football. Um and uh, it shows. So that's huge if you want to be part. And I think this is like the top team um, for like newcomers to join and follow and watch uh, just because there's already a huge fan base for them already. Um, and you'll you'll probably hear uh, the phrase call is the law. Uh, that's kind of their <laughs> their battle cry, the call. Um, so call is the law. That's K-A-W, not like call, call me. Um, call is the law. That's the Battle Hawks. Um, but yeah, football's back in St. Louis. Um, let me give you a couple people that I picked out of the roster here, Kyle. AJ McCarron is their uh, is one of their He's quarterbacks. Back, yes, he is. Uh, from his time with the Bengals, from his time of national national fame with for having a hot girlfriend. Shout out to AJ McCarron. <laughs> um, another name I see on here is Hakeem Butler. Who, Kyle, I could have sworn to you up and down that he was going to be the next Calvin Johnson. Uh, I drafted him in every single one of my dynasty leagues. I was so excited, and he just never ever panned out. Um, so I'm hoping maybe he can kind of get some steam rolling here in the XFL. Um, outside of that, I don't really notice or I don't really recognize any of these names at the tight end position, but their coach is actually um, kind of like a, a tight end whisperer, if you will. He was the – it's crazy to say this for high school, but he was the IMG Academy tight ends coach for six years, um, and then he coached elsewhere as tight end coach uh, a, different, a couple separate times, and he was actually a tight end at West Virginia University when he played um, – back in the I think the 90s um so you know he's got some definitely his, he's got some history as a tight end uh as a tight end whisperer and a tight end guy so I'm a, I'm hoping i guessing maybe one of these uh tight ends will be a guy to keep your eye on um throughout the season as as one of the top the top options so that's all I got for the uh for the battle hawks here yeah and then moving on to our final team here the Vegas Vipers um oh i gotta see some weren't they the la vipers uh i or believe no, they, they were, were yes the... oh no they weren't uh it was the la wild 
cats. Um, oh, they the vipers moved from somewhere. I'm completely blank. Vipers were uh oh, they were the Tampa Bay Vipers. Yes, that's what it is. Tampa Bay were, Vipers. That putrid Mountain Dew color green and yeah. Well, they're back. Uh, but they've kind of done a huge rebranding. They've went to a, an entirely different side of the of the country, playing out of Vegas. They are a beautiful kind of like black, white, and red uh, is their color scheme. Um, and something I <laughs> that actually just happened yesterday uh, as we're recording this is they they <laughs> cut their their current starting quarterback. Um, <laughs> And I just think this is so funny because he like his PR team just like kind of tried to push out that it was a mutual split. Um, but then the Vipers just came out later in the day saying, no, we cut him because he's bad. Like he he was cut. <laughs> um, so I think it's that takes record straight. <laughs> I think that takes guts to to cut a <laughs> your starting quarterback uh, and then instantly sign a, a familiar name and Brett Hundley. Um, mm. So he is now. I, their starting quarter or potential starting quarterback. He most likely will be um, because they, they had the balls to cut Brian Scott uh, <laughs> just because they weren't, weren't satisfied with his play. Yeah. I, I always liked Brett Hundley. I, I thought he could be better than, you know, than that people really kind of gave him credit for, but I, I, maybe I guess this is his chance to prove it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we saw him play a few games behind Aaron Rodgers uh, whenever he was hurt. Um, and now he kind of gets his own shot. Um, and I always like when former NFL quarterbacks get that opportunity um, in, these, in these spring leagues where it's just like, oh, you, you had an opportunity, but not the best one in the NFL. Like, come on over, uh, give right. it your best shot. And Hundley is, is primed in position for that uh, top, op- top opportunity. Um, on top of that, I also see some other guys that um, work. We're good NFL players. Uh, Vic Beasley is on this team, the former defensive end from the Atlanta Falcons, who was p- pretty pretty good for a little while. Um, yeah. I also see Martavis Bryant is on this team, uh, who was just an absolute burner for the Steelers for a while. Um, obviously, he's going to be a couple years older now, so we'll eh, we'll, we'll see what see what he's got in the tank. Um, and the other name I see on here is Geronimo Allison, uh, former Green Bay Packer, who is now a um, uh, now a Las Vegas Viper. So we'll, we'll see. I don't know. They got some names on here, and um, maybe I'm just adding fuel to your quarterback fire here, Kyle, but they did list Luis Perez twice on the uh, on the roster at quarterback here. So maybe that gives him the upper hand. That's a lot he's of on love. The roster twice. That's a lot of love. <laughs> That's a lot of love for whoever's running the XFL site to put him in there twice. <laughs> they, maybe time. they need an, they need an instant replacement for uh, Brian Scott. They're like, oh, copy-paste. <laughs> <laughs> Luis, you're on there twice. <laughs> uh, last thing I wanted to mention, Rod Woodson is their head coach, uh, former NFL player, former NFL great, I would say, Super Bowl winner, um, played with the Packers, played with the Niners, played with the Ravens. Play, I'm sorry, not the Packers, the Steelers, the Niners, the Ravens, and the Raiders in his career. So another another guy that's been kind of been around the block a little bit. So um, I like it. I think that they're going to be a – I think the Vipers are going to be one of the better teams. Yeah, I think they're going to be one of the top teams. I just had the odds um, for all of these teams uh, to win based on DraftKings Sportsbook, uh, where they have each of these teams winning, uh, or at least their odds. And right now, uh, the Vipers are in fifth. They have the fifth best odds. Oh, wow. Uh, Okay. I guess it should go down the list. Uh, Best odds to win the league uh, based on DraftKings are the St. Louis Battlehawks. Wow. Okay. Second are the Sea Dragons. Third are the Renegades. Okay. Fourth are the Brahmas. I know we didn't have much to chat about with them, but they mm-hmm. are fourth. Uh, fifth are the Vipers. Sixth are the Defenders. Seventh are the uh, Orlando Guardians. And then coming in last, or at least tied for last, uh, are the Roughnecks. So wow. Roughnecks and Guardians. I can't believe are that. Wow. Expected. <laughs> Have the worst odds to win the XFL championship this year. Interesting. 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 All right, my man. Let's wrap it up there. Those are the teams of the XFL and why you should root for them. Uh, but really, I quite honestly think if you are close to one, any of these teams, like location wise, uh, they should be your squad because then you can show up, to a, show up to a game. Uh, they're pretty cheap games to attend to. 
show up to a game, root for some fun football, uh, and just have a blast. Uh, but if you're nowhere near, uh, root for the defenders with me uh, or the Sea Dragons because they have a cool uh, logo and uniform design uh, or the Roughnecks for their helmets. So that's it for me. Uh, Zach, you have anything else to toss in here? No, nothing else other than at every single game. It doesn't matter who you're a fan of because – Every team plays every team, and maybe you'll be lucky enough to get one of the home games uh, this season. So cheer for who you want to cheer for, but definitely make an effort to be to, to get to your local uh, your local XFL team. Absolutely, absolutely. So thank you all for tuning in. Uh, again, you can find us on YouTube uh, to watch us visually or listen to us on, on the go with the podcast. Um, all, all places you can find us as XFL Weekly. Um, And thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week. See you.